Hi folks, this is Vardhan from Adoreka. Today I'm going to tell you why DevOps is an absolute need in every organization. It is the latest buzzword in the IT industry and it will remain that way until every organization out there adopts DevOps or one of its variations for software development. So let's see the agenda for today. We will start off by talking about the evolution of software development over the years. We will talk about how the methodologies and strategies have changed with respect to time and needs. After that, we will see how Facebook is using DevOps and why they stopped following the Agile model. We will then talk about DevOps in detail and the different stages in DevOps lifecycle. We will then finish off today's session by discussing a few DevOps tools. So first off, we have the waterfall model. In this model, the requirements need to be provided upfront and in full. The software here is developed with the idea that it's going to be stable for many years to come. The development here consists of different phases. First, the requirements gathering phase, then the architecture design phase, then comes the coding phase, and after that is the testing and the debugging phase. Finally, afterwards, the software can be delivered. Well, over time, people found that this model was very slow and the developers took a long time to develop the software. At times, development was so slow that by the time the actual software was delivered, requirements of the customers changed and they didn't want the software at all. So this gave birth to agile development. The difference with agile was that the entire software would not be delivered at one go, but it would be broken down into smaller chunks of features and delivered in fixed intervals like every week or once every two weeks with multiple iterations. So raising these features in multiple sprints not only gave the end users or customers more satisfaction with respect to progress made, but also gave them the flexibility to change the requirements midway and allow the developers to incorporate feedback given by the customers thereby saving lots of time and money for making the changes. Well, even though it reduced development time drastically, it lacked agility in operations. So that was when DevOps came in. Well, what is DevOps? It is the practice of bringing agility to both development and operations. All the major companies have started adopting this model because they have realized that development and operations go hand in hand to build a foolproof software. So let's understand the necessity of DevOps with the classic use case of Facebook. Well, back in 2011, Facebook released multiple features like timeline, music functionality, and tick are suddenly available to the entire user base. This global deployment got them into trouble. Facebook at that time had around 500 million users and a majority of them were active users. So as and when their users realized that their favorite social media websites suddenly introduced new functionality like timeline and music, they were all excited to explore the features and they all started using Facebook right away. This led to high website traffic, which in turn led to their server meltdown. Well, for obvious reasons, this high server utilization had a negative impact on their website and it was so bad that it brought down the site to its knees within minutes. This was a catastrophic situation for a company as big as Facebook. Well, this and also that the newly released features got mixed response from their users. Some felt that the timeline and the music functionalities were awesome and some did not like it at all. So they also had a tough time figuring out the flaws and in incorporating feedback. This is when they realized that there should be a change in the way the software is deployed. Post this, they came up with something called as the dark launching. In fact, many companies now are using this dark launching technique. Facebook, Google, Amazon and Netflix are just a few of them. Now let's understand what this dark launching is. It is a technique in which the features are deployed to a small user base. This user base is continuously monitored and their feedback is taken and the features are made better by continuous development and testing. Once the features are stable, they are deployed to the rest of the users over multiple releases. Now let's learn dark launching in more detail by understanding how Facebook would have implemented it. According to the dark launching technique, the features are only deployed to a small user base. If you can see from the diagram, only one delivery pipeline is currently active. There are many delivery pipelines, however, they're all turned off at this point. Now what Facebook does is, they continuously monitor the specific user base on which the features have been deployed to identify the bugs and get the user feedback. These bugs are fixed and the feedback is incorporated by continuous development and continuous testing. Now these updated features, they are then deployed back to the same user base. This process continues until the features are stable and the users are happy with the features. So when the stability is achieved, then these features are deployed to multiple user bases by turning on different delivery pipelines. On the contrary, 
if the users do not like the features then Facebook can just perform a rollback option and remove the functionality altogether. This way Facebook has a controlled or stable mechanism for developing new functionality to its massive user base. This also helps Facebook to prepare their servers for deployment as they can predict the user activity on their website and they can scale up their servers accordingly. You would have noticed that there are many new terminologies mentioned in this process like continuous development, continuous testing, continuous integration, continuous deployment and continuous monitoring. These activities cannot be performed using the agile model. Hence the methodology of DevOps was the way forward. It is not just Facebook, even Google, Amazon and Netflix use this process for releasing features. Google initially released Gchat features only to their own employees and based on multiple iterations and feedback from different teams they came up with a flawless functionality. Netflix did something similar. They came up with something called as a simian army. It consisted of different monkeys like chaos monkeys, latency monkeys and so on. Chaos monkey was the first in the series. It was basically a code which when deployed can shoot down a server instance and cause outage. This tool was more like a challenge to the developers on Netflix because servers will be shot down at random during business hours and developers had to work in real time to fix the issue during which time the users will actually be on the website and they should not have any interruption while streaming their movies or TV shows. This helped Netflix folks to learn their lessons about the weaknesses of their system and build automatic recovery mechanisms to deal with them. So next time an instance fails at 3 a.m. on a Sunday they wouldn't even need to worry. So what is DevOps? DevOps is a software development approach which involves continuous development, continuous testing, continuous integration, continuous deployment and continuous monitoring of the software throughout its development life cycle. This is exactly the process adopted by all the top companies to develop high quality software in shorter development life cycles resulting in greater customer satisfaction. Isn't that what every company wants? Definitely. By now you have understood the significance of the different stages of DevOps. Let us now see the tools which are used to automate these stages. For source code management we have Git and SVN. These tools help us in maintaining the code throughout the development life cycle. Different revisions of the code can be stored and if we want to roll back on any changes then we can just call that previous version of the code and deploy to production. For building we have tools like Maven, Ant and Gradle. They help you package your code into executable files which can then be produced into the testing environment. Then for continuous testing we have tools like Selenium and JUnit. For continuous integration we have a very popular tool called Jenkins. So if you're a software developer you would know what Jenkins is. Continuous integration means that you can test changes and then test that changes with other changes. The next stage is the continuous deployment stage. For this we have tools like Puppet, Chef, Solstack and Ansible. As and when the code is tested and ready it is pushed to production or the non-developer machine in this stage. And finally for continuous monitoring we have tools like New Relic, Sensu and Nagios. These tools help us to monitor our servers closely and check the health of the system. Anything can happen to your server at any time, right? So it's important they are monitored proactively rather than reactively. Well, they also improve productivity and increase the reliability of the systems and quite possibly save lots of money in IT support costs. So folks, that is the end of the session. Thank you for listening to the whole video and I hope it helped you understand some important concepts around DevOps. Please look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!